What's up guys, this is Ray, and today we'll be talking about the 2012 Japanese movie Key of Life, directed by Uchida Kenji and starring Kagawa Teruyuki and Sakai Masato. Before we dive into this review, I just want to shine the spotlight on a few folks. You know, if you guys follow me on Facebook and Twitter, uh, I post previews of uh, every upcoming movie review in the form of some GIFs. And you know, usually I do the hashtag guess the movie, but from, from this review, I started to just say, you know, caption this GIF. And I want to share some of the ones that uh, that really just caught my attention and made me smile and giggle. And this is something I'll do going forward, starting with this review. But, you know, let's take a look at the preview first. And there are some captions that you guys have posted. So ColdHeart44 posted this. You ready for that scrub? I don't know, when I read this, that really just made me laugh. I was in, my, I was in the office at work and I read it. I just couldn't stop laughing for a good 10 minutes. Next we have Hannah saying, all right, which one of you troglodytes stole the soap? You know, that's funny too. So if you guys want your caption highlighted, you know, just leave a comment wherever I post these previews, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, or even the, or even the community post on YouTube. Leave a comment and the ones that entertain me the most, I'll shine the spotlight on them and give you guys a shout out. Now going back to Key of Life. Key of Life was actually remade in Korea also in 2016 uh, into a movie by the name of Lucky. I admittedly have not seen Lucky yet, but I definitely have seen Key of Life numerous of times. I, you know, I simply put, I enjoy this film. It uh, has one of my favorite performers, Kagawa Teruyuki. Uh, favorite in the sense that, I, you know, I, no matter what he does, I feel like he can always pull out something entertaining. And granted, I feel like I kind of chalk him up to very similar types of roles like he's always like the scary guy and you know he naturally has a scary face you know you tell me you can't look at Kagawa's face and not think he's going to be some kind of villain but thankfully uh in this movie he gets to play kind of two roles and I'll explain why when it comes to this story so Key of Life focuses on two uh two dudes uh there's Sakurai played by Sakai Masato and there's Kondo played by Kagawa Teruyuki and Kondo he's a fixer he does kind of these dirt this dirty wet work for high paying clients and Sakurai he's kind of a failed actor you know he's on the brink of suicide actually when you first get to meet Sakurai he uh, he's just finished with an unsuccessful suicide attempt so both of these guys come from very dark places but then one day uh, both of these guys end up at the same public bathhouse and as Kondo walks into the bath a bar of soap slides towards him causing him to slip and fall and hit his head on the uh, on the bathroom floor and in these public baths usually you know you put all your clothes in a locker and you usually take your key uh, and you have it like around a, a wristband of sorts and you take it into the public bathhouse so that when you're done uh, taking your bath you can just unlock your locker say, uh, so you don't have to worry about your stuff getting stolen however when Kondo hits his head his key slides away from it uh, slides away from him and finds its way uh, in the location where uh, where Sakurai is. So Sakurai takes the key, eventually finds his way to Kondo's belongings, finds out he has a shitload of money, uh, he, had, he lives in a nice place, and you know, so he takes this opportunity to start repaying his debts and get his feet back on the ground. However, Kondo, uh, when he hit his head, he lost his memory, so he's trying to figure out afterwards who the hell he is, and uh, the only clue to who he is are the belongings which which were which belonged to Sakura actually. The uh, Sakura actually switched his key with Kondo. So now Kondo thinks he's Sakurai while Sakurai is parading as Kondo. And this starts this kind of fun take on the identity switch type of comedy story. So when it comes to the positives of Key of Life, uh, you know, it's genuinely funny. There are a lot of moments in here that will have you, uh, that will have you just laughing, whether, uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna be like a gut busting kind of laugher, but it definitely make you giggle because a lot of these jokes and a lot of these situations that these characters are placed in were very well crafted together. And what I like about this kind of comedy it's not the kind of loud slapstick style comedy but rather it's kind of subtle and it's more like uh, it doesn't rely, rely on loud noises or or punch lines it's, it relies a lot on the situations and the and seeing the way these characters crawl out of them like Sakura he takes on Kondo's identity and eventually uh, Kondo's employers start trying to track him down and they they you know Kondo is the type of fixer who no one actually knows uh, his face so when uh, his when uh, Kondo's employees meet Sakurai they can only assume that he's Kondo so it leads to all these hilarious kind of situations because obviously Sakurai he's not a fixer of any sorts he's a failed actor so he tries to use his acting abilities to get himself out of these situations. You have Kondo taking on the identity of Sakurai. Sakurai he lives in this really rundown apartment 
it looks like it's just welded together with a bunch of scrap metal uh, and it's really poor his room is just all messy so when he comes home you know you get to meet Kondo's very meticulous personality uh, and he's very well organized you know as expected from his actual profession but he's trying to figure out who he is so he try keeps a notebook and uh, of his belongings, trying to take notes on his on uh, on what he can notice about his own personality, his whole living situation, and you know it, it's interesting the way he interacts with everything that gets uh, that gets put in front of him, and it gets even more kind of out of control when you get introduced to this girl Kanaya, who's played by Hirosu Ryoko, and uh, Kanaya, she you know you, she's the very first character you meet in this whole entire movie in the very first scene, and you know you get introduced to her as this uh, this kind of high upper ranking office lady who, who announces that she's trying to get married uh, you know before a certain date she doesn't really know how she's gonna marry she doesn't even have a boyfriend so she, he, she meets uh, Kondo and you know she helps him trying to try to get back his memory and along the way they kind of form a relationship and you see it grow from there another thing I appreciate is though while this movie starts off in a pretty dark place you know like I said Sakurai uh, he comes off of a failed suicide attempt and uh, Kondo he is a fixer or professional killer however you want to interpret it uh, but this movie never ceases to keep its light hearted tone and rather dwell in these kind of dark origins uh, one thing I like about the, the prog progression of these characters is, is seeing how they come out of their dark, uh, th these dark origins. And that being said, the performances of the two leads were, you know, they were outstanding. Of course, Kagawa, I, like I said, whenever he's in front of the camera, he never ceases to entertain. He's a brilliant actor. And I think you can see a wide range of acting chops in this movie. You know, he starts off as his mean-faced, cold-blooded fixer, but then well, when he gets to the stage where he's trying to recover his memories, you see him kind of act, it almost seems out of place, and it's absolutely hilarious. And you have, uh, you have Sakai Masato, you know, he's not a bad actor, but he's, when you first meet him, he seems kind of like kind of a goofball, kind of a doofus, who, you know, who probably only has like one facial expression, it's just, it's just that, uh, it's just a face of bewilderment, the entire time just plastered on his face like but I think that's part of the charm of his character and you get to see a lot more of it towards the latter half of this movie and then you have Hirosu Ryoko's character Kanae you know at first when they when you had when I saw her interact with these two with the two male leads I was kind of lost as to why she was including the story but in the end uh, her story arc actually ties up quite nicely in connection with the the two male leads and I think looking back on it the way she her story mixes in with the other two stories it made it made the comedy work out very well indeed. As far as the negatives I have to say about Key of Life, this movie has a few pacing issues but I think the amount of comedy and the amount of charm that's in this movie it's enough to make up for these pacing issues. But overall what to have to say about Key of Life, you know I absolutely enjoyed it and you have a trio of very charming characters and an excellent screenplay filled with dialogue that the characters just bounce back and forth uh, between each other. And the story it starts off as this identity switch type of movie and not only that you know this movie eventually progresses into something where you know these characters are trying to get a restart on life eventually and of course I recommend this movie check it out if you want something fun lighthearted, comedic with a lot of heart and a lot of positive messages and of course the story builds up very nicely to the very final act and the payoff is a lot of fun but yes, those are my thoughts on Keith Life. What did you guys think? Please let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And by all means, please remember you can support Eggman on Patreon from as little as $1. And yeah, that's about it for me, guys. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and hope to catch you all again in the next video. Take it easy.